Hello, people of the internet, I'm Amanda Plan, and welcome. I hope you've been looking forward to this as much as I have, but we are finally able to start the Legend World Cup, and it all starts here at the Estadio Maracanã in Rio de Janeiro, as we have Brazil playing Cuba. Now, first of all, I'd like to clear a few things as the anthem spray and shit. Uh, first of all, some of the countries, uh, three of them in this tournament, don't have national anthems because Cuba, the Solomon Islands and Canada were all based off club teams since the nations themselves aren't actually in the game. I have to so yeah, uh, I don't think too many people care, but yeah, just in case you know this. And then second of all, as you're probably going to notice, um, I wasn't that great at making the players look what they looked like in real life. I did my best to make them look something like what they did. Uh, you could probably guess like some of the players, but not everyone's going to look pitch perfect. So um, yeah, I apologize for that. I'm pretty afraid to take the fits out of my car. But uh, yeah, uh, what else was I going to say? Did I have anything about uh, I don't think so. Uh, uh, other than, um, yeah, just hope you enjoy. Um, yeah, so, uh, so I, I did create the kit. Uh, Cuba usually do have a flag on their kit instead of the uh, team crest. To my anyway, yeah, so here's the team sheet. Uh, I went over it, but um, just in case you didn't know, look at it. With the Mario, Pele, and Ronaldo in the front three. They're probably going to crucify Cuba. Um, in Chelsea, is going to be uh, kept quite busy. Uh, in this game, um, Osvaldo Alonso and Eduardo Sobrango stand out as the other two kind of semi decent players. But other than that, I can't really see anything <laughs> for them. And now, finally, uh, all that waiting has come to an end and we are underway. Here we go. It's uh, down the wing to Ronaldo. Ronaldo swings it in. Pele is on the ball now. He's taking it outside. What can he do with it? He cuts inside, swings it. It's Romario and it's a goal. It only took them three minutes, but Brazil are in front. And what a start to the tournament for the Samba Stars. Uh, um, Cuba are already in trouble. And we're going to get a replay here in a minute, but uh, Cuba just caught in complete disarray. Um, uh, look what it means to the Brazilians. They were expecting a big win, and uh, boy, it looks like they're already on their way to something similar. Uh, brilliant work from Pele. It's Cuba coming down the wing. Here's uh, Marcel Hernandez. He's swinging it in, and the header, and Lester More really should have done better with that chance. He had a header at the back post, but it's uh, bounced out of play harmlessly for a goal kick. And the ball is inside the penalty area. Here, it's Garincha. That's uh, no one else is defending for the Cubans. It's knocked out to Romario. Romario swings it in. It's Ronaldo deflected and it's trickled into the net. And all that hard work from Cuba attacking earlier on. But uh, Ronaldo is the one who uh, bags the goal for Brazil. Uh, yeah, I wanted to give Ronaldo the power cut, but I couldn't. So that's why he doesn't look at him like. And uh, the header. Uh, it's Zico. And that will do it for half time. Brazil uh, deservedly in front. They have been comfortable in their control of the game. Cuba really uh, looking like they're out of ideas already. And well, it could be a very long second half if they don't uh, get into gear soon. And uh, it's Hernandez. Uh, oh, that's a nice bit of work. Flicks it up, lovely. And uh, the header really should have been put on target at least. But um, Eduardo Sobrango let Brazil get off with a warning there. Here's uh, Ronaldo Leonidas. Uh, pokes through Ronaldinho, was through on goal, and he's put it through the keeper's legs. It's four for Brazil, and that's fantastic. You really can't, uh, you really just can't uh, put into words how good this team is. It's been fantastic. Uh, oh, brilliant. And we should be approaching the end of the game now. A bit of uh, deflection there, but. That doesn't matter. It's 4-0 to Brazil at the end of the day. Fantastic showing from Brazil. They have shown already that they are going to be serious contenders for the World Cup. 4-0 uh, from the Estadio Americana, the full-time score. And so anyway, after that matchup, there was only two more left in Group A. Peru versus Nigeria being one from Lima. Peru being the home team. The Estadio Nacional del Peru, I believe it's what it's called. Um, so yeah, anyway, it was the home side got off to the brighter start of the two with this goal uh, from Claudio Pizarro giving them uh, the lead after four minutes. 
so yeah, Nigeria really had their work cut out for them, uh, um, and Peru honestly could have scored a few more in the first half, if I'm honest, because they had a lot of attacking chances, but that's not to say Nigeria didn't have their fair share of chances too, and uh, they did make it very difficult for the defence of Peru, um, you know, on the team, just the sheer amount of chances they were creating. But uh, eventually, Nigeria were rewarded for their efforts. Uh, Olise pokes it over the top. And Victor Ikpeba, uh, who I believe came off the bench, um, scores this goal uh, to make it 1-1. So um, all of a sudden, it looks like um, Nigeria are going to get away from this with a point. Uh, but uh, neither side was done yet. And um, Kabilas uh, just put it in there. And Jefferson Farfan fell Norberto Solano. And Solano hammered it home, making it 2-1 in the 88th minute. And, uh, well, with that goal, uh, he rescued the three points for the South Americans. And so Peru uh, pick up a vital three points in this really tough group. And uh, Nigeria will have to uh, look to their second game to get their um, campaign on track. And then the other game was uh, the complete opposite. If um, uh, Peru versus Nigeria was um, the example of a game that was uh, very close, very entertaining and very exciting, this was uh, just really um, a demolition derby. And I, I don't really think I need to say which way the game went. Because it's kind of obvious, uh, but anyway, yeah. So it was Hungary who scored first. Uh, this goal from Fedeng Puskas, not his last of the day either. Uh, it took, yeah, 31 minutes. So it did take Hungary a while to break down Australia, though they did create attacking chances all game. And it was like 10, it, it, I mean, obviously it wasn't that big, but it felt like it was the 10 to 1 for attacking chances. Then this ball over the top from Nandor hit it, found Puskas again. And Puskas hammers home his second. I mean, that is incredible power for a ground shot. But uh, yeah, Puskas um, really piling on the misery on Australia. Then this ball over the top, um, looking for someone, and just, what are you doing? Uh, I don't know what happened there, and um, all of a sudden it's 3 0, and Puskas has a hat trick in the first half, the first of the tournament, and it's not looking good for Australia, I'll be honest with you. They didn't really look like scoring all game, and that, that didn't change in the second half. In fact, it only got worse because there were more attacking chances for Hungary. Um, because and then Sandor Coxes got on the score sheet uh, with that header. Um, probably should have been saved, but um, I don't think he'll be complaining. Uh, this is um, really, I really wasn't expecting a game this one sided. And then, as if that wasn't enough, uh, though it was, uh, Puskas got another goal. Or sorry, that was Sandor Coxes again. So yeah, um, yeah. Then I mean, to be honest, even though it was only five 0 it could have easily been a lot worse. But. Um, that's the nature of the game, I suppose. Uh, I've been Ronald the Plant. Thank you for watching my videos. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please like, comment, and subscribe. And tune in next time where we'll have the um, first matches from Group B. So until then, I'll see you.